Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 4, Thrones of Ascension, Sunday, Bloody Sunday. So I played a couple turns without filming because not too much happened, just minor skirmish battles where no one was lost and um, the usual stuff. But now things are finally moving forward, so I wanted to start recording once again. We researched alteration and construction. We are now able to summon the forge, the magical forge. We are one level away from the unique magic items, but I'm moving away from that for a moment to go further in alteration to get the spell Marble Warriors, which is at the next alteration level. I should get that in two turns, and then we're back to construction. We're also summoning demons like crazy with Yeknocula and Darkhawk, and uh, we have a new Heliophagus, which I will introduce after we read these messages. We have not discovered any sites this turn. I have turned things around in CERN by putting five different blood slaves in there, all with sanguine dousing rods. It says the slave hunt is facing heavy opposition and the hunting has become very difficult, but that is not true. That province still has zero unrest due to good patrollers. So I'm not really entirely sure what this message means. I thought it meant the number of unrest, but it doesn't seem to be having any effect, so I can just safely ignore it. Let's look at our battles. Gemmer. Okay, now remember we lost the Battle of Dragon Ridge, but we are surrounding it. So we have armies in all directions. Here is our force. It is quite powerful. I'm getting to the point where I'm going to need to start producing supply items and giving them to my commanders because our armies are so gigantic that they are starving in many places, especially around Dragon Ridge where there's lots of wastelands, as you can see by the nice beautiful plateau in the back of this battle screen. Can I make the plateau bigger? Well, I suppose by, by doing this. You can see where we're at. A snowy desert, as you can see. If you've been following the channel, you'll note that I recently recorded a co-op video with DOS24680 and Tokshin on the game Small World, which two of us at least had experience playing as a board game, and it's a, lot, it's a really fun little game. You can get it on Steam. You can play multiplayer, single player. It's obviously not as complex as Dominions 4, but it's, it's definitely a good time. So I recommend if you haven't, check out that video. And if you're interested, check out the game. I'd like to thank Doss and Tokshin for, for collaborating with me on that. It was a lot of fun. And I don't mean to dismiss the drama of this epic battle, but... Needless to say, we win. We win and we lose 9 infantry, but otherwise we are okay. Tifia, this is our attack. And this is trying to take... They keep taking our borderlands and we keep taking them back. That's just kind of how things go. This army has a ton of mages, but not a lot to protect them. So I grouped all my shield troops as a square in the front to soak up arrows while my mages are able to spell up. This would spell certain doom against Pangea, because they just sent their... Harpies and Stymphalian birds back behind my line to kill all my mages, but against Agartha it is becoming quite a valuable tactic. And with this many mages, their melee doesn't really have much of a chance to get into our lines. I wish I could have my frontline troops hold a bit longer and let my mages do their thing, but I guess that would be kind of cheating because then the AI would simply rush you and you'd kill them all, so there wouldn't be any threat at all. So I understand why they just have to charge at some point. And we have routed them as well. In Tifia, we suffered the loss of two Pikineers and three infantries, but no heroes. Bara. This is Pangea. Oh, they're trying to take this little province, huh? I haven't done much to protect this province. I have, of course, the usual province defense, and they seem to be kind of falling down to this little bowl area here. Um, but aside from that, I believe the only hero I have here is Childebert, who is has a limp. So, one limping black priest versus the hordes of Pangea. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. 
Not entirely confident here. The Heavy Cav has broken past our lines. And as have the Stymphalian birds. Luckily, we seem to be getting the better of them. And they have Dispossessed Spirits and Shadows on their side as well. And Dryads, who are not allowing us to hit them due to their awe effect. But despite all this, they appear to be running. Except for this guy, who... Oh, wow. And... Are we going to take this? Is our one limping black priest going to stem the tide with just province defense? It looks that way. And what are the what are you guys? Heavy crossbowmen. Wow. Mercenaries. And we did it. We did it, folks. So we lost Oh, we did have some troops, okay, that weren't just province defense. We had we lost two pikeneers and one ranger of our 30 troop complement in, in who is Reinforcing the province defense, our limping black priest survived, and we took out 76 of 110 of them. You know, it, it's it's weird, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes things just go your way when they shouldn't, and sometimes things just go against you when they should, and there's no rhyme nor reason about it. We took out a captain. I think he's the mercenary captain, so hopefully we should see the end of those heavy crossbowmen. Fairy Forest. This is Agartha. Oh, I see. They're going to take this because this is just what Raphael conquered. And we have a basic minimum province defense of woodsmen. And as you recall, woodsmen die quite quickly to arrows, which is Agartha's special skill. And apparently they fare no better against rampaging cave drakes. It would be nice if we could take out one of them. That would certainly be interesting. But... It appears that it is not. Maybe our hero? Maybe our commander? Come on, buddy. Take him out. Yeah! Well, one's running away. Ah. So it looks like... We took out their attendant of the dead? Really? Nice. Alright, well then that wasn't completely worthless. Kopos. Ah, yes. This is Raphael coming back. Now, I'm having a little trouble with Raphael because everywhere you look, there's crossbowmen. And so he's just kind of... I'm trying to move him to safe provinces where there's a lot of melee and not so many crossbowmen, but it's becoming difficult. But I, you know, I don't want him to go the same way as Crazy Man and get crossbowed to death, especially because he has less hit points than Crazy Man did, and he doesn't have Crazy Man's liquid body spell, which... Oh, I love that. <laughs> which um, allowed him not to be injured so much, and also Crazy Man had quickness, I believe, which increased his defense. So, theoretically, Raphael would be weaker than Crazy Man against mass crossbow fire. But he is a beautiful sight to behold on the battlefield, let me tell you. He killed nine guys, took the province, not too many problems. Ferran, this is Pangea, okay. This is the castle that we are sieging, quite unsuccessfully, I might add. Well, with an army this small, what do you expect? Our only real offensive power is our two Hochmeisters, Gustav and Unit 171, are you? No, Helm. Helm and Gustav and... Helm? Oh, no, I thought he was healed. Looks like he is not. But again, I, I rather enjoy Battle Fright. It causes my commanders to care a bit more about not dying, which is good to me. I, I appreciate that. So that's my favorite affliction of all of them. I wouldn't want my troops to have it. But my commanders, sure. Okay, we can move this up a little bit. They're attacking us with wolves. Um, where have I seen that before? I don't know where they're getting their wolves from. But we should definitely not be wasting our precious spells on them. But rather the minotaurs. Oh my. Don't kill any commanders. I hate those harpies. Oh, but look. We seem to have made quite a few of our commanders ethereal, or at least Tygos is ethereal with his ethereal crossbow, and then we have Alaric, who is just about to pass out from exhaustion. Our thralls are leading the charge, which is precisely what they are good for. You know, if I were clever, 
I would have an Iron Priest with the Thralls. I would buff their protection with Wooden Warriors. Well, I couldn't have Wooden Warriors, but I could do Marble Warriors when I get it soon. And then we'd have Thralls with actual decent uh, protection as well. With huge morale, decent protection. That would be quite interesting. Okay, Land's End. Last battle of this turn. Oh yes, this is a disease province. I just came at them with 140 rangers. 140? No, 120 rangers. Four full units of rangers. And I need to figure out what to do with them because... I don't want them to get diseased. I hate this province. One thing I did do... Um, spoiler alert, I, I've already watched all these battles and played the turn in order so that you guys won't have to see me wondering what to do. Uh, and... I'm moving these guys out immediately, but I did pump up the province defense of this province very high so that we can keep it. People are still leaving, but not in large enough amounts to harm us. But look at this. A very deadly disease is spreading in Ulm. 820 people have died. I need to take care of that, and I have. Allow me, please, to introduce you to some new friends of mine. White Tiger 94 has changed his name to Shadowback. So, White Tiger 94 is dead. Long live shadow back we also have i believe i already introduced ascalon and vigdis von bernau dwari von bernau's son has joined our armies as well you all know that crazy man is back and finally we have yikali yikali is our new heliopagai and he unfortunately is a reaper which means he causes disease luckily none of my heroes are diseased or katarina Oh, that would have been something, but I'm moving him the hell out of here to some place a bit more safe for he, where he can hang out and cast some blood spells without having to worry about giving anyone disease. I'm actually kind of bummed about this. I'm not sure if my demon uh, demon summons are bothered by disease or if they, they are or they are not. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. He's a pretty good fighter, though. So, I don't know. I'll figure out what to do with him later, but... This gentleman, Yikali, is a bringer of misery, and his mere presence will cause disease to spread. He is also skilled in necromantic arts, so unlike the rest that are just blood mages, he is a death mage as well. And is that it for all of our new friends? Oh, there is also um, leading my demon army soon, we have Feeder Von Soup, the vampire count. He will be as soon as we fill him up with a few more demons, he will be going out to fight. I'm also moving a lot of people around to get some armies out here. You'll notice that Opal Warrior is ready to go. He is fully outfitted. He has the Horror Helm, the Awe Shield, the Faithful, which causes luck, Ethereal, the Boots of Stone, which give him high protection, a little bit of more protection, and finally, you haven't seen this before, the Astral Serpent. This gives him poison resistance, and it basically when he attacks somebody, it attacks them additionally with three non-armor damage, armor negating damage, and it gives death poison. So it's mostly useful against like thugs and super combatants because it takes them out, but I just thought it'd be a fun thing to give him. I mean, I, I didn't know what to give him for that other slot, and, and that was that, so we'll see what he can do. I've given him a bodyguard of 25... Zweihandas, and he's just going to charge into battle. And it's just my little experiment to see if a regular commander with a ridiculous amount of items, I mean, any veteran watching this probably just had a heart attack at all the gems I spent just on a regular 12 hit point commander with 10 magic resistance. But hey, you know, I'm not playing to be elite. I'm playing to have fun. So that's what I'm going to do. He is, um, uh, accompanied by Unit 171 and Eldritch von Sleemfest. I am leaving him as he is for right now because I want to move in some more melee troops in here to create kind of a screen. And I, I think that's just about it. I have Raphael coming here. He's going to attack these crossbowmen and heavy crossmen, but he's going to be helped by these guys. So they're going to take, hopefully, most of the hits while he has time to spell up and then hit them from the back with his flame burst spell, which I'm really excited about. Other than that, not too much to report. Barbell is ready to go. He is moving out. I have finally given him his arrow fend, so he's all itemed up and good to go. Next, either Hellion or Dragon Strike. Possibly Dragon Strike. I'm not sure. 
I mean, I love these guys too much for what they bring to me. These these two, Andric and Hellion, are my strongest casters in Multipath, Astral and Fire, and Death and Water. So I kind of don't want to risk them. And Dragon Strike creates dra uh, creates Dragon Gems, yes. He creates Fire Gems. So I really kind of just want to send Crazy Man back out again, because all he does is, is kill things. Effectively, I might add. All right. Well, here we go. I've already played out this turn. As I said, I moved everybody around. I did want to note that I will not be recording... I, I might record another video today, but I won't be recording any more between now and the 26th of December due to the holiday season. So I just thought I'd... For those of you who follow me closely and, and watch the videos generally after they come out, I just want you to be aware of that. All right. Nothing in Fairy Forest. Nothing in Golamrod. Oh, and I had Joern, who was one of my blood and what my one empowered blood priest cast Father Ill Earth, which is the one demon lord that Katarina cannot summon. And he is a blood and earth giant earth elemental king type guy, so he's really cool. As you can see, we are racking in the blood slaves. And uh this is pretty much our turn. We have five attacks and only one defense. Let's see what happens in Land's End. I mean, what am I saying? This is not our turn. Oh my gosh, I forgot who we were. So actually, we are being attacked multiple times. And if they attacked in Land's End, oh my gosh, that means that Raphael is attacking the large army of crossbowmen all by himself. Which is not optimal. And it also means that my ranger captains have an even higher chance of getting diseased. Which, again, not optimal. And they're summoning boatloads of undead. Which, again, normally would not be optimal, but apparently they are running away. Well, that could have gone very bad, but we took out a servant of the oracles and a bunch of crossbowmen. So, I, I'm curious. I don't, where's Raphael at? That's interesting. Let's see, Trenkabor. Okay, they're kind of attacking us in the southern corners. It appears we have been successful in reducing their troop amounts, but they have no end of these undead summoning Servant of the Oracle fellows. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure how... They only have one death, so that they can't raise skeletons. These are actually they're just getting tons of undead because of all the battles we're having in here. These are soulless, I believe, which are not as good as skeletons, but, I mean, as you can see, they... Sure raised quite a bit of them, and they're good enough. And our drunken priests are killing more of our guys than they're killing the enemies. So that's always a great way to start the battle. But I think those are just province defense. <laughs> now I just hope they get a little better now that my real troops are here. Okay. These blind fighters, man, they're pretty fierce. But we're designed to fight guys with shields, so eventually we should wear them down. And we have whew, one left, and he's running, but he's not going to make it. And we've routed them. That was a pretty tough battle. They lost their priest and their servant of the oracles. The attendant of the dead made it out, and the captain. They lost 28 of 30. We lost 7. One pikeneer, 6 infantry. Kopos. Okay, now they're attacking... Raphael with a bunch of crossbowmen so that that's a recipe for disaster but you know what not enough crossbowmen who are you revowed the troubadour he can seduce which is completely worthless because most commanders are male in this game which by the way Illwinter shame on you I have a bone to pick about that why is it that a succubus can only seduce a male succubuses are demons with magical seduction power it's not like they're using their looks to seduce people they are using evil dark forces and so i don't see any reason why a succubus couldn't also seduce a woman or or a dryad for that matter or a nymph or any other seducing creature i, I don't understand why it's limited to only males i think that is a a poor mechanic that's better suited for the 18th century than for dominions 4 and that is my opinion on that he has an enchanted sword and not much else. And here comes Raphael. 
and he's already just scared the living daylights out of them. Excellent. Excellent. And he is gaining very much in the way of experience. All 31 of them are dead. Not sure how that happened. Oh, because probably because they're mercenaries and we killed their leader. I don't know. Silvermark. Okay. Oh yes, this is the province that Agartha loves more than anything else for some reason and continues to attack it no matter who holds it. And I believe they're probably going to take it. These cave drakes have proven themselves... Well, I spoke too soon. Perhaps. Perhaps I spoke too soon. And I did. Gamur. Okay, we've seen this before. This is our nice plateaui wasteland snow province of plateaui snowiness. And I highly doubt anything is going to happen here. Our province defense are doing a good job of taking arrows for us. While the rest of my troops get ready and my priests shoot out fantastic bolts of pure magical awesomeness. And we've gotten past their melee and we're hitting their range line, so I'm pretty sure this is a this is a done deal. Although I feel a little bad for Hyrokel, as he's just he's like, come on guys, let me through! Let me through! <laughs> and he finally made it. Alright, here he comes. Why are you moving slow? Please tell me you don't have a limp or something. No, you're fine. Alright, excellent. So, five attacks, and we have successfully defended all of them. 52 we killed, we lost nothing here. That is exceptional. However, we found a magic item here, which leads me to believe we may have lost someone here. This is again the province where we are sieging the castle, and they received an amulet of anti-magic. This, you know, these guys have the luck pendants. So, okay, it wasn't one of my Hochmeisters, or at least they're not the ones that I have to worry about. I think we're fine here. I think one of them has the amulets of anti-magic. Maybe you? No, maybe you? Yeah, it's the Dryad. Good. Every one of those I kill, an angel gets its wings. They suck. <laughs> their, their little animation is fun, though. They, they kick out their leg when they cast a spell. Let's see if she'll cast another one for us. Yep, look at that. <laughs> uh. Sprites are awesome. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I mean, I'm telling you right now, this game would not be as good if it were in full 3D that you need the latest NVIDIA card to play and explosions everywhere and... No. No, I tell you, no. Thank you, no. And these satyrs are like, Hey, look at your legs have feet on them instead of hooves. That's really interesting. And then they die. And ooh, an earth elemental. Here we come. There's a berserked sniper, which is exactly my favorite kind of snipers because they don't shoot, they charge. Which is what I would prefer them to do. We, we are a slow moving army, but we are very impressive. Oh, and here's. Oh, good for you. Who did that? Gustav, you are the slayer of the Dryad. Gustav the Grave. So, we did not lose anything. Three Pikeneers, one Ranger, eight Thralls, and we just destroyed them. The Keeper Traditions, gone. The Dryad, gone. The Satyrs, gone. The Harpies, gone. Yes, that's how I like to play, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, people are leaving. We have 58 slaves. I enjoy that. People are starting to worship false pretenders in Tiosh. They will all die, every one of them. Dershid. 584 gold. An unknown benefactor. Well, please, my friend, come forward. Let us let us thank you. And we have moved our friend to Scantrast, where, frankly, I don't care if people are dying. It's a swamp. People die all the time. And four of our eight rioters in Agartha have been destroyed and attacked. So it appears it takes them about two turns to get wise to me and start murdering everyone. Faran has been breached, and Alfred, oh, dear Alfred, 
he is now dead. Oh, right. So, next turn, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice Katarina von Ulm is standing here in the middle of a field. Why would she do that? Well, it's because she's going to start summoning demon lords. And starting next turn, we are going to see the excitement as she does that. Meanwhile, Yikoli here is going to build a laboratory and summon demons, hopefully the kind that are immune to disease. One can only hope. Meanwhile, I have Shadowback and Barabel moving into attack. Ferran has been breached, though I'm certainly not going to storm it with this piddly little army. Perhaps when I move these folks up, it will be a bit more wise tactically, although I'm not entirely sure. I probably want them to go here instead to run interference for Katarina. So maybe I'll move Midas' army over here. I'll have to figure it out between episodes, but thank you so much for watching. It has, of course, been a pleasure to provide you with this Pan and Agarthan Cave Drake slaying entertainment. I hope that you come back soon. We have 400 blood slaves, so we're, we're gathering quite a lot of young women. I, I don't, they're coming faster than we're able to, to sacrifice them, so that's... I guess that's a problem worth having. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good one.